Today's video is analyzing data using a spreadsheet program. The spreadsheet program that I'm going to be using is OpenOffice Calc. However, most of these things will work on Microsoft Excel. Some of them will work in the Google Docs spreadsheet. But for our purposes here, we're using OpenOffice Calc. So first, I want you to notice something about how I've entered the data. Uh, the data is entered such that um, there are numbers in cells or words, but not both. What you see here is data for measuring the period of a pendulum as it depends on the length. So the independent variable is the length and the dependent variable is the period. And what I've done is I've put the name of the variable length and the units of the variable in the column header above all of the data for the length. And I've put the, the name of the dependent variable period and the units of the dependent variable seconds in the column header for all of the data for the time. In this way, we have numbers separate from words, and you can do your calculations with the numbers and, and not have the text that gives you the units and the name interfering with your calculations. If you put both numbers and text in a cell, it's going to assume it's, an, it's text. One way to figure that out is if you type in, for example, 14 centimeters, it puts the text left justified. It's going to left justify automatically any text, and it will right justify automatically any numbers. So if I type in just 14 without any text after it, you'll see that that's right justified, meaning it's interpreting it as a number, whereas 14 with the centimeters after it, it's interpreting it as a text. You don't want to put text in if you're going to do calculations with the numbers. So the first calculation we want to do is the average of for each data point. So I'll type the column header here, average, and then in the next cell, if I want to do a calculation, what I do is I type an equal sign, and then I type in the, th what, the equation that I wanted to calculate. So in this case, I wanted to add up these three individual cells. And I tell it to use those three individual cells by indicating their names. So for example, the cell right here with 0.73 in it, it is in column B, row 4. So its name is B4. So I type in B4. Plus, then I want to type in the next one, which is C4. Plus, then I want to type in the next one, which is D4. And then, since to get the average, I add up the 3 and divide by 3. I simply type divide by 3, and I hit enter, and that's the average of those three. Uh, a simpler way to do that would be to put just to click on the cells. So click on B5 plus click on BC5 plus click on D5, close parentheses, divide by 3, and you have the average of those three numbers. Or an even simpler way would be to write the word average, open parentheses, and then highlight the three numbers that you want to find the average of. And there's the average of those three numbers. So there are three different ways. The first way was by typing in the cell names. The second way was by clicking on each cell. And the third was using the average function and highlighting the cells. So the next thing we want to do is calculate these last two cells. So you could go ahead and type the equations in, but let me show you a cheating or quick way to do it. And that would be using the fill down feature, which is uh, available under edit. Or an even shorter cut to that is if you notice in the bottom right hand corner of this cell here that I've highlighted, there is a dot, a square dot. If I click on this, if I move my cursor over the dot, my cursor turns to a plus. If I now click there, hold it down, and drag down, it, has, it copies my formula into the two cells that I've highlighted. So now I have the average in each of those cells using the average function 
on my spreadsheet. But what you'll notice is that it very carefully instead of saying b6 to d6 as in the third row in the fourth row it now knows to use b7 to d7 that's called relative referencing and here it uses b8 to d8 because when you type in b6 to d6 it's thinking cells that are three to my left two to my left one to my left and so when i copy that down it's copying those positions those relative positions three to the left two to the left one to the left rather than the absolute positions. So now, let's say we want to calculate the average deviation, or the standard deviation, rather. So the next row will be the standard deviation. And of course, there's a function for that. And the function is STDEV. And so I type STDEV after the equal sign, open parentheses, and then I highlight the three numbers not the average, just the three original values, close parentheses, hit return, and I have the, average, the standard deviation of those three numbers. To finish this off, I click here in the bottom right corner, drag down, and I have the average deviation, standard deviation, I'm sorry, for all five different lengths. Now you might notice that I have quite a few significant digits. And as we know, the standard deviation only gets one significant digit. So here's what we want to do. This one looks like the hundredths place is significant, and this one as well, and these two as well. So let's go ahead and highlight those numbers and go up to Format, Cells, and we're going to ch and Number, and we're going to choose two decimal places. And there now we've given two decimal places to each of those. In this case, the thousandth place is significant. So here I want to do the same thing, format cells, and I want three decimal places. So now the standard deviation only has one significant digit. The next rule is that the average gets only the same number of decimal places as the standard deviation. So again, I want to do the formatting here. I want to highlight these and fix them so that they only have two decimal places. And this one only, this one gets three decimal places. Format, cells, decimal places, three. So now I have the average and the standard deviation calculated all to the correct number of significant digits.